Okay, in this video, I'd like to uh, continue on from our treatment of differential equations using power series to start using the method of Frobenius. So, first of all, I've drawn a differential equation in green. And the question is really, when do we use the method of Frobenius, or how do we know when to use it? And the answer is as follows. If I divide across by x squared here, such that the highest power has a coefficient of 1, or the highest, excuse me, differential has a coefficient of 1, then in this case I'll have x squared underneath here. And no matter what I do, there will always be an x underneath the line. And when x is equal to 0, I will have a divide by 0 scenario, and I will have a singularity, which is not allowed. So, in the case that you have a singularity, you must use the method of Frobenius. The next thing is, the actual power series used is different. It's now x to the n plus r. So we have y is equal to sum from 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n plus r. Whereas in, usual, in the usual solutions for uh, differential equations using power series, we just use x to, x to the n. Alright? So as normal, I've differentiated to get y prime and y double prime. Something very straightforward. The next thing we need to do, of course, is solve this as we would have solved any other power series solution. So we need to make sure that all of our terms start at the same point. In this case, they do, of course, because we have n is equal to 0 going to infinity. However, their powers don't. For example, n plus r minus 2 is not equal to n plus r minus 1 is not equal to n plus r. All right? But before we do, we'll do any of that, I suppose really what we need to do is go back to our equation. I multiply in by x squared for y double prime, x and x squared for y prime. So let's multiply cross by x squared for y double prime. And we'll get the following equation, whereby the x squared there cancelled with the 2 and we just get x to the n plus r. Everything else has, is unchanged. Doing a similar process, we multiply y prime by 1, or excuse me, by x. And we get the following, whereby we got rid of the negative 1 here, and now it's just x to the n plus r. And finally, we multiply x squared times y prime. And this time, we're just adding an extra 1 onto here. So now we look and see where do our series begin and what are their powers. So we see that we have this is different to this. is different. Uh, yeah, okay, so for first of all, these two powers aren't the same. However, the power on x times y prime and the power on x squared y double prime and the power on y are all x to the n plus r. So that would suggest, well, why don't you shift x squared times y prime downwards? And I'll say to you, well, there's no, no particular problem with that. However, I find it actually more difficult to do. So I will always suggest that you move up to the highest power. So I'll suggest that you shift to the highest power. And it doesn't matter how many how many other terms you have to change as a result of that, in my opinion. Of course, if you find it easier to shift downwards, well then that's absolutely perfect. So, let's begin to shift downwards. Okay, so we'll start with, start with x squared times y double prime. Okay, so here's x squared y double prime. And what we want to do is shift that so that it becomes x to the n plus r plus 1. And as we said in the past, the way to do this is to write out the first few terms in the series and then work from there. So in this case, if we let x, well, excuse me, if we let n is equal to 0, we're going to get a0 times r times r minus 1 times x to the r plus, and we'll, we'll leave the, the power series as follows. n is equal to 1 times a n n plus r n plus r minus 1 x to the uh, x to the n plus r. My question is, is this, are we able to shift this term up to meet this? And the answer is absolutely. It's a lot easier to shift that term, okay? So that means that we don't need any more terms, or we don't need to work out any more terms in the power series. It just means that we need to readjust this one here. So I said, as I said before, for every if you increase the powers, we'll say between my red brackets, you must decrease the numbers here. And if you, or if you, excuse me, if you increase n, you must decrease n here. And if you decrease n inside here, you must increase it here. All right. So as a result, what we're going to do is we're going to increase the power of n inside the brackets. And as a result, we're going to get the following. We're going to get a n plus one 
n plus r plus 1, n plus r, x to the n plus r plus 1, starting at n is equal to 0. And that's very good because look, it starts at the same point and it is the same power. So let's do the exact same thing with x, y double, x, y prime, excuse me. Alright, so the first term, there's x, y prime here. The first term is going to be a0 times r times x to the r plus, and we're going to have n is equal to 1 up to infinity, and it's going to be a n, n plus r, x to the n plus r, and it's the exact same essentially equation as we did up here. So this becomes n plus r plus 1, okay, and we get a n plus 1 and 1 plus n plus r, like that. Alright, so it's the exact same thing. And the last thing we need to do is to shift y. Okay, and if you go back up here, just to remind you, now don't mind all these bits of text here, I'll show you the one to look at. The one we're going to look at here is y. Okay, and y is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of a n times x to the n plus r. So let's just, uh, let's just um, take the first term of that, that series. So we're going to get a0 times x to the r. And we're going to have the sum then remaining from n is equal to 1 to infinity of a n times x to the n plus r. And look, this is the exact same scenario really as we've had in the past ones. So let's just shift this straight out. So this becomes n is equal to 0 because a n plus 1 times x to the n plus r plus 1. All right, that's very straightforward stuff. Okay, now just I'm just going to draw a line here so we don't get ourselves too confused. Okay, there's a line there and there's a line here. So what I'm saying is that these three terms, actually, actually, in fact, let me move that. That's that's that line is incorrect. It should be here. Okay, these are the four terms that we're left with. And if you notice, each one of them has the same power. There, which, where is n plus r plus 1, and they all start at n is equal to, that should be 0, n is equal to 0 to infinity. And then for three of them, namely y, x squared y double prime, and x y prime, there's also a coefficient here, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so I'll, I, I don't want this video to be too long, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one more small piece, and then I'll stop, and I'll leave it, the rest of it for the second part of the video. Okay, so just bear with me now, and I just I just clean up my uh, my board. All right. Now, if you go back up here, we're going to need to put all those different equations into this equation here. Okay, and that's pretty straightforward stuff. And you just need to be careful, of course, about your signs, namely that we have a negative x squared and times y prime and a negative y. Okay. The thing is, though. If you look at this carefully, you realize that you're going to have a ridiculously long equation as a result. Like, you're going to have to put all of these on a single line and look at them all together. And to be honest, that's really a pain in the face. So the best way to do it is to say as follows, right? We're going to say that y is equal to 1 plus 2 is equal to the constants, or we'll say the coefficients. Actually, I'll take that back. Um, Coefficients, okay, coefficients plus powers. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'll put all the coefficients together and then put all the, the, uh, the power series together. So let's just do the coefficients first of all. So equation 2 is equal to a0 x to the r. Now it's an actual fact, it's x squared y double prime. Okay, so we're, there's x squared y double prime. So it's a0 times r times r minus 1 times x to the r and we have to multiply we have to add to that x times y prime x times y prime is here a0 x to the r times r and we need to take away from that x squared y prime but there is no single coefficient so that's okay and we need to take away from that y and y is going to be a0 x to the r Okay, I could see that you, uh, I'm going to have to realize and you couldn't see that there. I'll just go over that once more. Okay, so what we did was, 
we plugged in the coefficient for x squared y double prime. Then we took away, for, or we, we added to that the coefficient of x y prime here. Then we took away from that the coefficient of x squared y prime, but there is none. And then we took away from that the coefficient on y, which is here. All right, and uh, we can do the same thing with the with the actual with the power series themselves. And you're just going to have to bear with me one moment and write them out. We'll even bother x. Yeah, I will. I will. Okay, and just bear with me one moment now. Okay, so what I've done here is I know they all start at the same point and they have the same common power. So now I'm just going to put in all the x, the 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 the, um, the remaining bits. Okay, so you can watch it from there. Okay, so we need to start out with x squared y double prime. So the that's a n plus one times n plus r plus one times n plus r like that. We need to add to that x times y prime. X times y prime. So that's going to be a n plus one, n plus r plus one, like that. We need to take away from that x squared y prime. Okay, and that's going to be a n times n plus r. And finally, we need to take away from that the uh, we need to take away from that y, which is just going to be um, minus a n plus one. And I get to close off my bracket like this. And they are the two bits that we're left with. Okay. And what we can say now is, is if you remember from the so, the solution in general for power series, we had something along like along the line, excuse me, along the lines of this. And what we did was we set it to zero and we solved for we'll say in this case a n plus one in terms of a n. Now if you look this equation here, if you set this to zero, that will also give you a value for r at which you can be able to plug back in here and solve it the exact same way as we did for the power series solutions. I'll do that in part two of the video. So thanks for watching, please pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.